Welcome back to the Transport Bennett Channel. I'm Cheryl. I'm Jeff or Mr. Dimples. And we are in Pendleton, Oregon. We've been driving all day to get here and we have finally made it. It's about nine o'clock, 9.30 actually here in Pendleton and we can go pick up our load in our yard um, to take to Southern California. That's right. And then on to possibly Possibly go to Mexico. Mexico? That's right. That's going to be awesome. That'll be the fun side of RV transport for sure. We are going to Indio in Southern California. That's somewhere yep. between Los Angeles and Phoenix, I think. But we'll, we'll drop down into Mexico if we have time. Yeah, if we have time to. But anyway, we're here in Pendleton. This is our yard all the way out here in Oregon where we have to turn at the prison. Remember that from our earlier videos? Look here. See, this is the... Uh, Eastern Oregon Correctional Institute. Yeah, we turn here at the prison. By the way, this is Mr. Bones. He's our traveling companion. As you all well know, he doesn't care that it's creepy and spooky out here. You know why? He's dead already. And this right here is the Keystone Manufacturing Plant. That's why our yard is out here. Also, I think Horizon has a yard out here and Indiana Transport and some, maybe some other companies have a yard here at the Keystone Manufacturing Plant right in front of us. We're going to make a right down this road here and we'll go to the Synergy Yard out here in Pendleton, but you have to know the gate codes to get in. Not anybody can get in here, just us drivers who have the special code. And we have arrived at the gate, which I will have to unlock now. Okay, so you can't see our yard, but here's our yard with the units on it, barely. You can see it in the dark uh, with all the different units. I've printed off our BOL on my Canon TR150 on the way here. And now we'll come to the actual gate yard. Yep, that little printer is working great for us. But now I have the second gate that I have to get into. And always make sure these gates are locked when we leave out. All right, she got it. And here comes the muscle. Mr. Bones, he doesn't help at all with this. Okay, so the next process that we do here is I'll look on my BOL at the serial number and we'll go in there and we'll find our unit as it's got to match up with the VIN number. So I'll look it up on my serial number and make sure that we're hooking up to the correct unit because we definitely don't want to take the wrong unit. Right, and I also like to know what kind of unit it is so I know what we're looking for. We are uh, taking a 30 foot Aspen Trail travel trailer. All right, so I know to look for an Aspen Trail and then look at the serial number. Oh, and by the way, congratulations, Mr. Arnold, on 100,000 safe miles. Thank you. You're getting a shirt from Synergy and a $100 extra bonus, I yeah. think, aren't you? I'll be featuring that shirt in an upcoming video. Awesome. Good job, honey. It's personalized. Okay, let's go find our unit. Let's go. Let's do it. Okay, these are all bullets. 
So those are not our units. A few hideouts. We're looking for an at 30 foot Aspen Trail. A little creepy out here at night. Good thing we got some good flashlights with us. All right, there's an Aspen Trail. We're looking for unit number 24153, which is, I believe, that one. Which you guys can't see it, but I believe it's that number that's right there. Hold on. You can go out and look at the number. 24153. Yeah, I think that's it. While Jeff gets turned around, I couldn't see that number really good. So I'm going to double check that number to my VIN number on the sticker on the side of the camper. Let me take a look and make sure this is the correct unit. Right there. Yep, that matches up with our VIN number. So that's how I know this one is going to be ours. Jeff's going to back up now and we are going to get it lined up and the first thing we're going to do is check and attach our electrical power cord to and check our lights to make sure they are working. Okay, we're going to want to make sure that that plug is in there securely and now we're going to have Jeff put on his four-way flashers. It looks good right now. Go ahead and put on your four-way flashers. And we'll check to make sure our lights are working. So we'll step around back here. Make sure all the lights are on. And we got lights. We're good to go. Now Jeff is ready to back up and hook up the unit. We are all lined up with the ball. And now we have power. So we're going to lower that down onto the ball. By pressing this button right here, that'll lower that down. Just until we release some of the weight off the foot. And then make sure you always get your safety lock down. And then I'm going to run the safety cable and the power cord and put our lock right through this hole right here. I'll show you that in just a second. This is what I'm talking about, about putting the, putting the lock through the, uh, what is this, the hitch lock, Jeff? We always run our power cord and our safety chain through that, and we always put the rounded part or the rounded loop on the side with the cords. Excuse me. This is the breakaway cable. Oh, yeah. That's not the not safety a, chain. Not safe chain. It's breakaway cable. Breakaway cable. And for the chains, you know, I don't know if you can see those. There they are. Because it's dark out here, and I don't know if you can hear me since I'm at the rear of the truck, but always cross your chains. That's just acts. That just acts as an extra standard. You know, just cross your chains there like that before you hook them up. And make sure your sewer cap is on, which is always underneath the unit in the dark. Yay! This is the sewer cap, which is always hanging off. You see how it's hanging off right there? We want to take that off and put that on. It just slides on. You can see that you just put that on there. And that's just mud. Don't worry about that. There's, this has not been used before or anything like that. So it's not gunky. So that's just mud from the road. So just slide that on into place. And when you're picking up out here, always remember that your packet will be located inside the unit. That's the packet right there that you can barely see. This is the packet that's inside the unit. Always get that out of your door and bring it in the truck with you just to make sure you've got that because this has the dealer acceptance form in it. So you want to make sure you have this packet. If you're at the office in Indiana, um, this packet will come in with your, um, with your paperwork there at the, um, at the office in your mailbox or they'll give it to you in person. But out here in Oregon, it's always inside the unit. I know it's dark. I've got the keys to the unit. That's always going to go inside your packet you just picked up. I also put the BOL inside this packet along with our dealer acceptance form. We have checked the tires. We've uh, done all of the work to the rear of the truck hooking up there with the weight distribution and the um, all the lockups and the hookups and all that. So we're ready to roll. I didn't spend amount immense amount of time going over that because we have videos of how to hook up and we are going to clear this yard. I'm going to make sure those gates are locked back behind us. 
right now and then we're just going to travel on about 10 more miles down the road call it a night and get rolling in the morning we are going off duty in about 10 miles thank goodness it's been a long day we're hooked up but we're ready to roll to southern california tomorrow let's go we've made it up here to the arrowhead travel plaza where we will find a place to park for the night and there's plenty of RV parking here. Just all of these spots right here are great places to park the RV for the night. There we go. All parked for the night at the Arrowhead Travel Plaza. We will see you in the morning. Uh, boys burger joint we're gonna get Jeff something to eat right there that looks like an easy pull in and an easy pull out place yes. let's go get us a burger from Idaho yes well this was a great place to stop at the burger joint here in Parma Idaho really nice people i really want to stop back by here we've got us a chocolate strawberry milkshake and two cheeseburgers and it was a really great place to stop we're going to try those cheeseburgers right now and then head on down the road jeff what do you think about the burger joint burger i don't know the burger looks good look at that that's really good the burger looks good the fries look good the milkshake was delicious fry sauce yep. we got a chocolate strawberry milkshake and we haven't tried it yet but it looks really good so let's dig in
we're on the state line of Oregon and Nevada now and leaving Oregon thanks come back soon and entering Nevada or Nevada I think he's supposed to say it Nevada right Oh, That's Lynn on the phone. Everybody knows Lynn, Welcome right? Welcome to Nevada. Welcome to Nevada. The Safe Win Casino. We've got about 60 miles to Winnemucca, and that's where our discounted fuel will be. I'll show you exactly how we find our discounted fuel. I use the app Fuelbook, which is available to um, all the RV transporters who work at Synergy at least, um, maybe some others. After you've clicked on the app, you'll press Power Search. Then just click the Route button. At that point, you can put in any, your current location, just leave that alone and put your destination in. Or if you wanna check further down the road or a different part of the country, just type in your starting point and your end point and this is what comes up. Press the power search button one more time. It may give you the option of one or two routes that you're going to be traveling on. Just press on the route that you're traveling on. Then voila! It'll come up with the 10 most cheapest places. That is the price that you will pay using your Calm Data card at these places. Then just press on the one that you are most interested in on your route. And the name of that pilot station and the exit is on will come up at the bottom. Just click on that. And it'll tell you what your savings is and from the marquee price and what you will pay. Plus it also, if you scroll down, it'll tell you all the amenities that that pilot station may have, such as showers or coin laundry, parking spaces, restaurants, anything like that. And if you click the map button, then on your phone, it'll automatically direct you there through Google Maps. Now, if I want to find out exactly what that pilot station looks like and find out a little more information, I can even look and see what the parking is like at that pilot station. I use this app. It's called Trucker Path. And a screen will pop up that shows a little circle that, and that little blue dot in that circle, that's you and the direction you're traveling. And then you can click on any one of those little icons, rest areas, way stations, upcoming truck stops. Click on one of those. I'll click on the pilot station that we're going to stop at. And when I click on that, it'll come up at the bottom uh, the name of the pilot station, what exit it's on, and how many more miles I've got left to go to that place and it's star rating so if it's a good truck stop it has a like a 3.5 or it might have a 3.8 so the higher up in star rating it is the better a truck stop it is but then just click on the name of the pilot station just scroll down and it'll tell you how many free spaces it has for parking not reserved trucker spaces if it has how many showers it has, if it has laundry, ATM, overnight parking is available here, um, and any, uh, if it has Wi-Fi, so, and then you can also click on the map or the directions button, it'll take you to Google Maps and take you straight there. And if you click on the Google Earth view of that pilot station, you can zoom in on it, look around, see what type of uh, turning spaces they have there, if the parking lot is big, if it's a tight place, or if there is no parking available, or if it looks too low and cramped, or if it's too much in the city or out in the country, it's great. Just click on that. So this place looks like an excellent place to stop for the evening. After we get our fuel, this is where we're going to stop. It has a huge truck parking spot. We don't park back where the truckers park at. We will probably find a space up front or someplace out of the way of the big truckers because we never like to take up a truck spot as a sign of safety too so that they're not backing in or getting too close to you, that kind of thing. So we always try to find a space near the curb or near the front of the store to park overnight in. So let's get on down here to Winnemucca and get some fuel and stop for the evening.
looks like a place where there might be a Stephen King movie, if I've ever seen one. I think you're in Winnemucca. Yeah, we're in Winnemucca. Look at towns that name. Yeah, Winnemucca. Winnemucca. Yeah. That's like Saskatchewan. on I-80 West, just a little bit west of Winnemucca to the pilot station where we're going to call it a night. And we have had some amazing scenery, as always, out here in the west. We love yeah, it. What that hamburger wasn't that good. Yeah, it really wasn't that good. So, sorry, Burger Joint. Sometimes our reviews are wonderful, but Burger Joint Burgers, not so good. Not so good. All right, but this beautiful sunset has captivated us for the last hour. It's just absolutely gorgeous. That's one reason we love doing this job. It's just fantastic. So what kind of movie you want to watch tonight, Cheryl? Let's I'm watch thinking, a thriller. I'm thinking a caveman movie. Caveman movie? Yeah. Caveman movie. Okay. If it doesn't have guns or cavemen in it or barbarians or dragons. I like dinosaurs too. And dinosaurs. I like space. Yeah, maybe I'll make you watch Kate and Leopold or Sleepless in Seattle or some chick flick. <laughs> chick flick. Chick hey, let's, flick. Let's make him watch a chick flick. Hey, yeah. I offered to watch Kate and Leopold with you about a week ago. He had offered to watch a chick flick with And you me. turned me down. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't in a chick flick kind of mood. In any case, we're going to call it a night and pick a. We'll probably spend the next two hours deciding on what movie we would like to watch. Winnemucca so, good Boulevard. night, and we'll see you in the morning. From Winnemucca. Winnemucca. Say it. Winnemucca. Winnemucca. Good night. Well, good morning. Fueling. First thing in the morning. And uh, we're here in Winnemucca, Nevada. And we are ready to roll out. We've been talking to a couple of other transporters who stayed here last night. And um, they were telling us about how terrible the conditions were going across I-80 in Wyoming. It's winter time, so you have to be cautious out there. You have to drive slow. If the wind is over 25 miles per hour, pull over, shut it down. Don't risk it. Too many transporters and their trucks got blown over. <sighs> but it's still going, so good morning to us. <laughs> Let's say good morning to Mr. Bones. Good morning. What's up, baby doll? Are you calling everybody in YouTube land, baby doll? No, just you. <laughs> you think the other big burly transporter men would like to be called baby doll? <laughs> Some of them might. <laughs> Some of them might. But I'm not going to be the one to call them that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's still going! Oh my god. Mr. Bones, as you know, is in charge of the airbags. He does a pretty good job. Good morning, Mr. Bones. Because our airbags, let's see what he's got them on today. We have the airlift airbags, which are remote controlled airbags. We have a whole video on the airlift airbags, so go take a look at that. And he's got them set on 26. 
Don't ask me why it picks up like this, because that's just crazy. KFC, that'll work. Bucket yep. of chicken? It'll have to work. Okay, there was no place that we could pull the trailer into at KFC, because that's always a problem when you got the trailer on. Darling, you got yourself a Burger King chicken sandwich. Yeah, it's definitely not my first choice. But it'll do because I'm starving. There you go. Alright, so we're going to continue on 95 straight south out of Fallon, Nevada and head towards California across the desert. Hey, there's water in the desert. That's a rare sight. It must have rained here really recently, like a lot of rain. We've never seen water standing in the desert like that before. This is all Paiute Reservation, Indian Reservation. It's a beautiful day outside, 47 degrees, and we're hitting the mountains before long. We do have a notice or warning for high winds trucks are prohibited when that light is flashing, but we don't have any wind today, so we're doing good. Checked our Windy app, 
and everything looks like smooth sailing today. Depot. The Hawthorne Army Depot is a U.S. Army Joint Munitions Command Ammunition Storage Depot located near the town of Hawthorne in western Nevada. It's directly south of Walker Lake, which we just passed. The depot covers 147,000 acres or 226 square miles and has 600,000 square feet storage space in a total of 2,427 bunkers. It is the world's largest depot. It's divided into three ammunition storage and production areas, plus an industrial area, housing command headquarters, facilities, and engineering shops. The depot stores conventional munitions, demilitarizes and disposes of unserviceable, obsolete, and surplus munitions and maintain servability th through inspection and renovation to ensure munitions readiness. The Hawthorne Army Depot stores reserve munitions that can be used for the first 30 days of any major conflict for the United States. And that was the NAVC Warfare Center. of Mina and just passed a sign that no explosive laden vehicles past this point. Watch out for our jackasses, except I've got one here in the truck with me, so there you go. And the wildcat. Alright, we're turning off of 95 onto 360, even deeper into the desert. We'll be turning on to Highway 6. Now we will start our ascension of the Sierra Nevadas, but we are at 7,045 feet right here and still going up. Montgomery Pass, 7,167. Look at that. Oh, 
Nevada and entering, there we go, California. Truck speed limit, and once you pass into California, anything three axles or more, you have to adhere to the 55 mile per hour law. Now we have our agricultural inspection station. Supposedly. For California. She'll just ask us if we have any like lettuce and stuff. I'm gonna tell her I got some Jamaican oranges and a spider monkey. I don't think so. That was easy. We just rolled up, rolled down the window. The lady said, do you have any fruits, vegetables? plants or animals we said no ma'am she said have a good day that was that easy Sierra Nevada Mountains right here. All right, well, we made it to California. I'm sorry. So now we'll travel on US 395 all the way towards San Bernardino and Los Angeles area. We'll be traveling right here beside the Sierra Nevada mountains uh, for the next 121 miles. Hey, look at all the sheep Jeff said. Now look at all the volcanic rock here. We got another big lava field coming up in the distance there. like that and it's probably been there for a million years. Okay, do you see that really large mountain over there? to hike to the top of that twice we were unsuccessful and uh we're not gonna try it again nope that's over and done with in our life but we have been at the foot of it and have attempted halfway up but did not make the top of that one that's one of our 14er nemesis right there 14,505 feet at the very tip hey jeff hey 
Do you remember when we attempted our climb of Mount Whitney all those sure. years ago? We used to be big hikers back in the day. And mountain climbers. We have scaled three 14ers, right? Yep. And I've climbed to the top of Mount Fuji in Japan. And Handy's Peak, Pike's Peak. Yep. And what's the other one? Baker. No, that was uh, at the Great Basin. Great Basin. I forgot what the name of it is. Yep. But uh, well, yeah. We've climbed several. We used to hike all the time, believe it or not. Now we hike on our motorcycles. But we attempted uh, Long's Peak in the Rocky Mountains and didn't make that because a thunderstorm was rolling yep. in. And then my hands swole up the second time we attempted it because yep. of the elevation change. And then we attempted Mount Whitney, which is the picture I just showed you. And uh, it was as we got out of tree line, Jeff's kind of got that malaria shaking thing. Yeah, so you know when you climb on these big mountains, sometimes you make it, sometimes you don't, but never give up. Those days are in our past now, and we are now doing RV transport, sitting in a truck and getting no exercise whatsoever. We also used to mountain bike. So we have mountain biked the, uh, the famous Flume Trail. Uh, out in uh, at Reno and Tahoe. Yep, and the Cocopelli Trail. The Cocopelli Trail out at Moab. The Goonie Bird Trail. Yep, the Goonie Bird Trail at Moab and the uh, Appalachian Trail and all that. Yep, our mountain trail. Yes, and uh, we used to be fairly active in our younger days. Unlike today, where we have spent the last six weeks in sitting in a truck. We've been out since December 28th. And we're ready to get home after this load. Uh, we're going to get delivered tomorrow morning and then pop on down to Mexico and then head on I-40 back home and spend a couple of weeks at home. If we can stay at home that long. If we still have a truck when we leave Mexico. Yeah. That's a possibility. <laughs> Joshua trees. See those little trees that are growing up right there? That's a Joshua tree. a California rest area and um, there are quite a few really large ravens here which I love. Take a look. So we are within 80 miles of 
San Bernardino, the outskirts, the eastern outskirts of the 215 on our GPS that will take us on the beltway around, you know, that outside area of Los Angeles. And it looks horrible with backed up traffic. It's all in red on our Garmin and Google Maps and everything. So we were like, well, we want to get on the other side of Los Angeles to, so we don't have to deal with that traffic in the morning so that we can make delivery. Well, we're out here in the middle of the desert. There's nothing going on. And I'm looking and I'm like, I don't want to sit for two hours in traffic. So I'm pulling out our very well used motor carrier Atlas to see if there's a different truck route around to get down to Indio, California from where we're at now, which is just south of Ridgecrest. And it looks like we can turn at Kramer Junction. So we are, we called our buddy Mike and asked him if he had ever gone that route. He said no, and he wants to find out from us if it's good route because I have found a truck route that will negate going all the way through that whole traffic mess around Los Angeles and take us straight, drop us straight down into um, 29 Palms, which is just a half hour from Indio or whatever. So it looks like a good deal. We wouldn't even have to get below there before we can stop for the evening. So we may be able to stop as soon as it gets dark and then take on the rest of the beautiful desert, which we love to see in the daytime. So we don't miss out on this cool scenery. So let's try it out. Here's the route. We are traveling right here about now. We are going, instead of going down here, and getting on the 215 all the way through here where all that bad traffic is at Kramer Junction we're going to turn over go to Barstow and because this is a motor carriers atlas it will tell me that this is a truck route anything that's in orange is a truck route so we get that's safe to go on go to Barstow and either stop for the night there and then take the 247 down to Lucerne Valley and then take the 247 down to Joshua Tree, hop on down to Palm Springs, and then we'll be in Indio tomorrow morning So to make our delivery. See, if we go this way from here, is it that much different than going this way, but we cut off all that terrible traffic. So we'll just go down through this way, and it's the fun side of RV transport. That's why you want to have your motor carrier's road atlas with you. And it's been a gorgeous afternoon and a beautiful sunset. It's getting dark now. Take a look at this. And that's going to call it for tonight. We'll let you know where we're staying for tonight and we'll pick up again in the morning. Good morning, we have palm trees. Barstow, California. stuff out here in the desert.
morning. Well, it was not such a great night for us because we stopped at Kramer Junction uh, and was able to park out front of the pilot station. However, there was a train, and as much as I love trains, I don't like a train that comes through every 30 minutes yeah, it blowing its horn. Yeah, it wasn't just one train. It was every 30 minutes, trains came through there blowing their horn, and they must have only been 10 feet from the truck. Yeah, it was it really was close to the truck, so we have not had very much sleep last night because of all the train activity. But I'm in a pretty good mood now. Yeah, we're, we're, we're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed yeah. now. I've been talking to my buddy Kip, my Marine Corps buddy. Yeah. You've seen him on video. Love Kip. We're going to make delivery here shortly, and then we're going to have the fun side of RV transport and go down to El Mexico. El Mexico! <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to work on our Spanish, apparently. <laughs> but yeah. there are some crazy things out here in the desert. I mean, just some, you see some weird stuff out here driving around in the desert. So, let's get through the desert and get delivered. Hey, Cheryl. Yeah. I need a taco. You want a street taco? Yeah, I need a taco. All right. We can provide you with a taco, I'm sure, because there's tacos everywhere. We've been seeing signs for street tacos every 10 feet yeah. out here in the desert. I need a taco right now. All right. Let's provide him with a taco. Follow us on our journey, our last leg to get delivered here in Southern California. We're going to Indio. Let's go. the Joshua trees. If you don't hear from me anymore, will you come down to Mexico and find me? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Hey, look at that cactus, Jeff. Oh, that's cool. Great cactus right there. And those, as you've seen before, are Joshua trees. But those are extremely large ones. Really big Joshua trees. Now here's a fast fact about Joshua trees. Why do they call them Joshua trees, Jeff? Um, you just told me, but I forgot. They call them Joshua trees because the Mormon immigrants who first settled the area uh, named them after the biblical figure Joshua as being, because of their outstretched limbs, they were pointing the way west. All right, so now you can see why I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but that's why they call them Joshua trees. Interesting facts and figures about this load. 
1,063 miles. Um, Jeff is averaging 13.2 on the fuel mileage. We were able to get fuel for $3.75 up at Winnemucca. And this is a 32-foot Aspen Trail travel trailer right behind us here. So that's the figures. We're doing good. We'll um, deliver this, submit our paperwork, and get paid the second half of our allotted amount as soon as we make delivery here in India. Look at this palm tree farm. That's cool. There so because I'm parked on the street here waiting to see what to do. See, sometimes you have to just park along the curb because the RV dealership here in California is just jam packed and no way to get in there or out of there with a unit. So I'm going to go in there and ask him where he wants us to pull this. Okay, we have made delivery, and this is one of the best places you can possibly deliver to here at R uh, Rebel RV Motorsports. That's the man right there. Awesome. All right, let's get out of here and head to Mexico. Hey, Cheryl. Yeah. Guess what? What? It's a miracle's happened today. What's happened today? I've had my faith restored in California. You have? These guys here at the RV place have been awesome i know i love them here at rebel rv motorsports in indio california yeah. this is the place to deliver Man. they were i was in and out with my paperwork signed one guy checks you in while one guy is signing your paper so um and it was are fast. My, and these are my people sir oh yeah these guys were awesome they told us a great place to go eat the jalisco restaurant yeah, man. and uh so get some good mexican food and um we love the delivering here. I want to come back and deliver one right now. Me too. These guys are awesome. I mean, they just, I don't know, they just perked my spirit up. You know? I know. They're really, really fun to talk to. Yeah. And that's a great dealership when you get a, a good personal relationship with the people yeah. who own it. Yeah, it's awesome. So thank you to Rebel RV Motorsports for making this a fabulous delivery. That's it for us. I hope you enjoyed our trip through the desert. Yep, now it's time for the fun side of RV trip. We're going to Mexico. But first we're going to get some Mexican food to prepare ourselves. <laughs> yep. And you're going to come right along with us on the next video. And if you like this video. And you know, wait a minute, Cheryl. What? Do you know why they're going to come along with us? Why? Because they're going to subscribe. Subscribe. Press that like button, comment down below, and share this video over everywhere. to your Facebook share friends. It everywhere. Share it everywhere. It's going to help our channel grow. Thank you so much for watching us. Jeff, Transport Bandits, out. out.